I was fine with the men. Stop singing! This is some weird looking static. Also, how is this commercial being shown here exactly? The VCR-like interface leads me to think it's a VHS tape of some sort, but Marty didn't give Greg anything like that, and I doubt it would fit in an envelope. And if it's on live TV, then why would you need the VCR interface, and how would Greg have turned to a channel that played that ad at exactly the right time? Steven's eyebrow disappears in this frame. So this episode is a musical, and if you remember my thoughts on the movie, you might think that I don't like that approach. But actually, I think this episode is a musical done correctly. Mainly because 11 minutes of songs is a lot more focused and coherent than an hour and a half of songs. The movie had songs that added basically nothing and felt like padding, while every song here, with the exception of one, has great value. I'm not going to play the songs, otherwise Turner is going to have a field day taking all my ad revenue. So for the sake of not bogging the video's pace down, I'm gonna subtract a sin for Don't Cost Nothing and it's Reprise, Mr. Greg, and It's Over, Isn't It? They're all really good songs. I could put you through college. But I'm with the gems all the time. That's not a counter argument. It's not like you're chained to the gems at all times and you'll be punished for being away from them. And maybe he means that they'd give him more knowledge than college ever could and so he doesn't really need it? But considering how sheltered and unknowledgeable on some Earth things the gems are, that doesn't really make sense either. Again, can't really play the copyrighted audio, so you'll have to trust me on this one. Greg's strumming is nowhere close to being in time with the music here. So in that list earlier, you may have noticed that there are two big songs missing. I'm gonna go over one of them later for a special reason, but as for the other one, well... I know a place that's always exciting, the shows and the sights and the lights that are blinding. I don't really like Empire City. The instrumental is okay, but all of the lyrics are either generic or just really fucking stupid. I know a place that's always exciting, the shows and the sights and the lights so blinding. Empire City! And let's bring Pearl. That's probably the one good part of the song, though. Past experiences have taught me that three's a crowd. That's in terms of relationships and or fusion, not friendly outings. There's a difference. Just you, me, Pearl, and don't forget Mom. Steven either has no earthly idea what reading the room means, or he's doing this awkward shit on purpose. And yes, he's somewhat doing this to close the gap between Pearl and Greg, but he didn't have to make it awkward by shouting that little tidbit out loud. Also, Greg's tan line on his right arm is black in this shot when it's the correct color on his left arm. Ah yes, my favorite headline. News, 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 news! It's really strange seeing neat little details like this cute advertisement for a new dollcopter movie alongside stuff like this. When the fuck did he have this made? It's probably a personal thing he had made just for fun, that's fair. But then why does Greg think showing it to this guy will do anything but confuse him? Greg's eyebrows are the same color as his beard in this shot when they're supposed to be the same color as his hair. And he's here to spend his dough all over the town. Or he could just need a hotel for the night and he has no intention to spend anything extra in Empire City? Nothing was really communicated here, so why is that the immediate assumption? Greg's tan on his legs is reversed in this shot. For reference, this is what it's supposed to look like. It's all deluxe. It's all deluxe. When you're dining out with me, it's the finest steak and breed. That finest steak already looks like it has a bite taken out of it. The tan is reversed in this shot, too. This city's got its charm, unlike that termite-ridden barn. I'm pretty sure even the most two-star hotel in the world would have more charm than a goddamn barn. Maybe later. Ooh, you ruined the song! Greg's hair and beard are the same color in this shot when they should be different colors. And for Pearl's next hat trick, she'll make her mouth disappear. This spinning shot looks really weird. For one thing, the background is spinning way faster than Pearl is, so is she herself spinning and the camera's just following her at an awkward speed? And even so, the building she's standing on the balcony of doesn't even appear in this shot at all. So I guess this is an abstract background? But then why make that abstract background look almost identical to the city background outside? Not to mention this shot lasts for 25 seconds. So this just strikes me as cool spinning shot that we can use so we can take a break from animating body motion without putting much thought into where Pearl is and what her surroundings are. 
And it's really unfortunate that they took this approach because when they do fully animate Pearl, it's some really good and dynamic stuff. Her dancing on the glass here is honestly pretty mesmerizing and her animation during the song as a whole is fantastic. I've also got to highlight this part of the song specifically, which is so good it gives me legitimate chills. And she loved you and she's gone. You were awake. You were literally screaming at one point. How could they not wake up to that? Ugh, cherry man. That's another nice little callback I really appreciate. Wait, so what was the plan here? Did Steven really expect to just drag Pearl here kicking and screaming and expect them to immediately talk out their problems? Yeah, what I said earlier? I really think Steven does have no fucking idea what he's doing. Ooh. Why don't you talk to each other? This is the other song I wanted to wait for because this is quite possibly my favorite song in all of Steven Universe. And if not, then it's definitely up there. The instrumental is really beautiful. The visuals are probably the best in the episode. Steven's singing really pulls it all together. It's just a masterpiece in all honesty. There are some future songs that come close, but there's nothing that can really top both of you. It's just the best in my opinion. Greg's hair and beard color are almost the same color again, but this time his beard is a darker color than his hair, which is, again, wrong. I know these are all really petty, but they're still errors. You'll have to trust me on this one again, but there's a solid second here where Steven just stops playing, yet the song indicates he should actually be hitting more keys. I know these instrument-related sins are probably my biggest nitpicks to date, but it comes off as really jarring to me when a character playing an instrument doesn't at least attempt to match the music that's playing. I knew how you felt about Rose, and I stayed anyway. That wasn't the problem. Then what was? She fell in love with you. Well, you know Rose. She, she always, always did, did what she wanted. wanted. And that's that mental hurdle solved. No, really. That last sentence, which added almost nothing of value to the conversation, was apparently enough to overcome the roadblock stopping Pearl from fully getting along with Greg. It's such an odd sentence. Of course Rose did what she wanted in terms of a relationship. Don't most people? I get that Greg and Pearl probably just needed to talk to each other about Rose to fully be able to move on from it, but I'm not buying that that disaster of a sentence fixed anything. What? Just built to my bank. It's over, isn't it? Why can't I move on? It's over, isn't it? Why can't I move 